everyone, it's Jen from Old Tinker Studio. In this Substance Painter tutorial for beginners, you will be introduced to the interface of Substance Painter. The link to download Substance Painter is in the description. Please note that this is a paid program, but you can sign up for a 30-day free trial, or if you are a student, you can also sign up for a student license. So let's get on with the tutorial. This tutorial will introduce you to working with 3D models in Substance Painter. We will be exploring the interface of Substance Painter. I'll begin by showing you how to navigate in Substance Painter. First, I'll open a sample project named Meet Matt. This model can be found under File, Open Samples. For someone coming from Maya, the navigation will be familiar. Scrolling the mouse wheel will zoom in and out. You can also use Alt and the mouse wheel. Alt left mouse button allows you to rotate the view. Alt middle mouse button allows you to pan the view. Alt right mouse button allows you to use the dolly zoom. Shift right mouse button allows you to rotate the environment. Now we'll take a look at the menus. The main menu is located above the toolbar. And this is where you can access the basic functions of Substance Painter. The file menu contains options for creating and saving projects, as well as options for importing and exporting resources. The edit menu allows you to have access to undo and redo actions and also gives you access to project settings and global settings. The mode menu allows you to switch the interface of Substance Painter. The window menu gives you the option to display specific windows. The viewport menu allows you to change the rendering modes of the viewports. The Python menu lists all the available Python-based plugins. The JavaScript menu lists all the available JavaScript-based plugins. The Help menu gives you access to various documents about Substance Painter. Below the main menu is the viewport. The default viewport is divided into two sections, a 3D viewport and a 2D viewport. In the upper right of the viewport, you will see the options available. You can use the 3D viewport only, 2D viewport only, or you can switch the 2D and 3D viewports. Next to the viewport options, you have the view options. You can choose from perspective or orthographic view. Now note, if you cannot find a particular object in your scene, you can always use the F key to bring it into focus. Next is the camera rotation options. You can choose from free rotation, which allows you to freely rotate the camera, or constrained rotation, which constrains the camera movements. The last option is for rendering, something we'll be covering in later tutorials. Now we'll take a look at the tools. The Paint tool is the default tool in Substance Painter. This tool allows you to apply colors and materials on a 3D mesh. At the top of the viewport, you have access to size, flow, stroke capacity, and spacing options for the brush. These options are also available on the right under the brush options. You'll find a set of brushes in the shelf, and you can also import your own brushes to the shelf. If I choose a brush and scroll down in the brush options to the material section, 
you can see that you have numerous options. The color channel allows you to add a brush to the mesh simply by painting on the mesh or on the UV. The metallic channel allows you to add metalness to the material where white is fully metallic. The roughness channel allows you to add roughness or glossiness to the material, where white is fully rough. The normal channel allows you to add normal information to the mesh. So I'm going to add a material. Then I'll use a brush to add normal information to the mesh. The height channel allows you to add height information to the mesh. A negative number will push into the mesh, whereas a positive number will add height to the mesh. The eraser allows you to erase what has already been painted. You can erase all of the channels or individual channels. If I choose the height channel, I can erase the height information, but none of the other channels will be affected. The projection tool allows you to paint a material by projecting it in the viewport space. S and the left mouse button rotates the stencil. S, Shift, and the left mouse button snaps the rotation of the stencil. S and the right mouse button zooms the stencil. And S and the middle mouse button translates or moves the stencil. If I choose a material, I can place the stencil on the body. and use the options just discussed to place the material on the body. And then simply use my mouse to project the material onto the mesh. The polygon fill tool allows you to fill in specific areas of the mesh with paint or to mask off areas where you don't want a material to cover on the mesh. The triangle fill will fill the individual mesh's tries. The polygon fill will fill the individual polygons. The mesh fill will fill the entire connected parts of the mesh. The UV chunk fill fills the entire UV island. If I add a black mask to the existing layer and paint the polygons with white, I will reveal the underlying paint, but if I use a black color, I can hide parts of the paint in the polygons. The smudge tool allows you to smudge the paint layers on any of the channels. If I choose the color channel, 
I can smudge the color on the head. But the other channels won't be affected. The clone tool allows you to clone parts of the channels you've already applied to the mesh. By placing the square target over an area and then moving the mouse, the circular area is where the clone will be applied. Below the viewport is the shelf. This is where all of your assets and resources are available to you. The main shelf manages the shelf presets and allows navigation to various resources. The sub shelf is a custom window that can be created from shelf presets. The shelf is divided into five areas. The presets toolbar, presets list, filtering, search, and the results. You have access to five buttons that help you work with the shelf. The first icon allows you to expand or collapse the list of presets. The second icon allows you to extract the current search or shelf preset into a new window. The third icon allows you to save the current filtering into a new shelf preset. The fourth icon allows you to hide the default presets. And the last icon allows you to import new resources. The filter editor allows you to filter these shelf resources in three ways. The path option allows you to refine the results by a folder structure. The usage option lists all the possible usages that are available. And the text option allows you to add any other type of query, such as keywords. On the right side of the interface, we have four more tools. The first is the display settings, which is where you can access settings for the environment, camera, or viewport. The next icon is the shader settings, which allows you to control the shader parameters. This helps to define how an object interacts with lights and shadows in the viewport. Next is the history of what functions you performed in the current session of Substance Painter. The last option is the log, which logs all the behind the scenes of the current session. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.